Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. My name is Katie Riley and I'm a Marketing Associate at Accesso and your moderator today. I want to thank you for joining us for our webinar, Introducing the Shining New Standard in Smart Park Technology. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. During the webinar, you will have the opportunity to submit text questions using the questions pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. We will collect your questions and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. And now I'd like to introduce you to our presenter, Frank Good. Frank is a Director of Sales at Accesso and joins us today from Ottawa. Frank, take it away. Hey, thanks Katie. And thanks to everyone for joining us today for this webinar. I know you're all really busy. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in and I'll do my best to keep this as short and as relevant as possible for you. So as the title of the webinar implies, we're gonna to chat today about our latest innovation accesso, uh, the PRISM wearable. This is showing a new standard in smart park technology. This is a really exciting piece of technology Although I'm really more excited about the creative ways that you folks will be use it to enhance your guest experience and perhaps your revenue. So I uh, really welcome the questions you have afterwards and any discussions that we can start around how you see this working in your environment. So for those of you who may not be familiar with Excel, so it's really important to start with this. It's true that we really believe that technology has the power to redefine the guest experience. You know, whenever we look at our products, we're always considering the best ways to use technology, so it makes a real difference. We want it to impact how a guest thinks and how they feel about their experience with their venues. You know, we know this is really essential to the success of what you do. So whether it's buying a ticket, uh, purchasing merchandise in a POS system, or you know, using our product to avoid queue lines and then manage the day better, you know, all these guest touch points can be used to really enhance what people think of their day. So today, the product that we're introducing really focuses around our queuing technologies. Uh, for some of you who may not be 100% familiar with that, you may be more familiar with our ticketing, online ticketing, and POS systems. But queuing technologies is where low queue started. And it was really the start of this development that we're calling PRISM today. Uh, it was introduced actually originally in the early 2000s into the theme park space. It started with the founder of our company then, Low Q, Leonard Sim, visiting a park in Florida in the late 1990s. He ended up standing in line for three hours uh, for an attraction. <clears throat> the ride closed down, they had to leave. They wasted three hours at a precious vacation. You know, his wife, who was a very strong, well woman at the time, really pushed it on Leonard to use his, his, his knowledge about uh, semiconductors and paging technology that he was involved with at the time to create a way so people could have a better guest experience. That's where it all started. So he created a system that provides wait times and allows people to make a reservation so they don't have to wait in line. Our products wait in line for the guests so they can do more with their day and have more fun instead. Uh, the key differentiator with this compared to a lot of fronted line systems is it's digital. So we manage things a lot differently. We broadcast information about attraction wait time so people both can make decisions. And when they make their choices, we store that digitally so they can access it later or change their mind. It's a really smart system. It allows for a really large number of guests to avoid waiting in long queue lines to get far more in the day. So over time, you know, this service is delivered basically into the delivery of three products. The QBot is an offshoot of our original queuing product. Um, the latest version of QBot was actually launched in 2006. It's used in places like Six Flags and Legoland all over the world. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may have used it. It's really quite good. It's, it's durable, um, it's, it's proven. It operates as a standalone device. It doesn't borrow on other networks. We actually created a network around it. And the devices network with each other in a mesh uh, environment. So it's really quite smart that way. It's easy to use. Kids and parents can use it alike. It does a great job of helping people avoid lines. They hit a button, they make a reservation, they walk away. The issue though is it's a bit dated. The 99 form factor, yeah, it's apparent, you know, especially with today's environment. The Zigbee network, although it's great, it does run into some issues when people are putting in pervasive Wi-Fi now, there's some interference. 
And of course, it's really about a single function. Also, as we look at where we could help people solve waiting in line, we started thinking about water parks. And as you can see from this device, it doesn't do a good job of fitting into bathing suits or bikinis. So we know we have to come up with something different. And with that, we came up with what we call Q-Band. Q-Band was introduced about 2011. And preceding that, it actually, sorry, after that, it won an IAPA Best New Technology Award. So we're really quite happy with it. The great thing about Q-Band, it really started our understanding and movement towards wearable devices. And we see a lot of potential in this form factor. It operates differently than a Q-Bot, though. It still has a proprietary communication network, but the way this operates is it has an RFID chip in it. You walk up to a kiosk, and using the bands, you unlock the kiosk with your personal identifier. That helps the guests access their account, if you will, and the ride selections they have. People get information about ride wait times um, to the kiosk. They make a selection, put the band back on, and through near-field communication, we download that information back onto the band. Now the guest has a reservation, and they can walk away with a countdown time that's visible on their wrist. When I get down to zero, they can go to the attraction, they can ride it. So quite simple to use, quite smart again, works really well for environments that are wet because it is waterproof and very durable. It is, it is really primarily a queuing product and it can be used for more than a single function, really. It can be used for caches, it can be used for lockers, but it wasn't used en masse for that. So although it's a great tool, you know, it still was lacking in some areas with communication. During this time, though, when you look at the field of technology around us, it was obvious that the technology in our pockets was becoming increasingly powerful. And this was a great advantage to how we could communicate and how we could deliver our queuing services to the world. So we developed what we call QSmart. This is really great. It uses the guest's own hardware. They don't have to rent anything. They don't have to pick up anything. It's all cloud-based. So it's really easily accessible. And as we developed it, we looked at how we could deliver queuing differently. We created a hosted management suite, which was a great advancement. We were able to add several features to this that we didn't have in our other products that achieved a better guest experience. Um, the issue we had, however, with this product, a little bit, it's still fantastic, but in, in some environments where, say, there's high velocity rides like theme parks, there's issues around loose articles. Having phones to manage your day and phones on rides doesn't work that well. So, you know, although this solves so much of what we want to do, there was a couple of elements about it that wasn't quite perfect. Still a great product, not quite perfect. About two years ago, we really started to look at all of our solutions and what we were doing. You know, we're innovators. We're always looking at what's next. And we were evaluating our whole queuing portfolio to examine the pros and cons of each. And I've been extremely honest about what that is. And the products were working really well, but we knew we had to stay ahead of the curve. And we had to make decisions about the evolution of our hardware and how we're going to leverage future technology. You know, we had to consider how could we go to a single form factor? How could we stay with a standalone device that was durable, easy to use? How could we continue to offer really the core of our product, which was the queuing packages that had become diversified? You know, how could it be flexible enough to allow people to both make uh, pay for reservations for the day and also maybe offer queueless operations, which might get into a freemium model? Um, how were modern communications changing? How could we leverage that? So there's a lot of questions we had as we looked at this from sort of ground zero and building up. But really, what was interesting was thinking about the expanded capabilities. What else could we do with this device that was beyond queuing? You know, this is where things really got interesting. And I believe this is the point that's really going to separate PRISM from just being another queuing product to something far, far more multidimensional. And I hope you agree with me. We looked at technology at the time. You know, it's all business all around us. Um, you know, in the last couple of years, connectivity is so increased. The Internet of Things wasn't even a consideration when we first developed our products. Now we have remote thermostats you can get onto with your phone. Uh, car navigation is, is standard. It's not optional anymore. We have cars with Wi-Fi. You know, so people's overall expectations about how technology serves them 
has really increased dramatically. And we had to think about that when we wanted to meet the needs of the modern guest. You know, good technology is becoming an expectation of venues of all type all over the world. And we have to keep up with that pace. We know that's something we owe this market. We also had to consider that we had these core essential aspects of our product, queuing, of course, is being one of them. You know, we know that people value the time more than anything else. That's a great value proposition. So this new product has to really deliver on helping guests avoid long wait times. And, you know, we had to build this into the product no matter what. But looking at other areas, we also know that people were looking for an ease of use and an ease of their guest journey all the way through their their interaction with the venue. So things like cashless payments. I mean, hassle-free payments is an obvious benefit. You know, increasingly people are using NFC payments all over the world, and this is going to continue to evolve. Um, I know for myself, calling you from Canada right now in Ottawa, we uh, pervasively have NFC chips built into our credit cards and our PIN cards. So when I pay, I simply tap and I go. It's so simple. When I visit the States, it's always a step back for me to think about having to put my card into a device and enter my PIN. And it's not much of a hassle, but it really proves to me how much you know we've evolved in these areas. And we wanted to offer that as part of the product as well. Access is a huge thing as well. It's so important for people to get to things easily and quickly now. Um, and everything that you have in your own venues, it could be hotel rooms, lockers, or just quick access to turnstiles, ski lifts, entry into VIP areas. You know, people are changing their concepts about how they get to things and are allowed access. Just think about new cars. You know, keys are becoming antiquated. People are going in with a fob now, pushing a button and going. So we know that was an expectation moving forward as well. Photography. Photography is a huge part of our lives, you know, um, more so than we even think of. When you look at things like GoPro and camera phones, you know, it was clear to us as we developed a new platform, we should provide a really easy way to help manage, help guests manage their digital memories, you know, either to access them or store them and, and get through that part of it. And just connectivity in general. You know, Nobody wants to miss out on the fun. Uh, nobody wants to miss out on offers now. Everyone's connected. You know, there's this, this need for people to have information. So it was really important for us to make sure that whatever device we had would have excellent connectivity options and that people could have access to information um, to make their days a lot better. So that was a lot to put into one design <laughs> exercise, quite honestly. Uh, it was quite a challenge. You know, how are we going to do this? How are we going to accomplish all of this? Our design team, you know, worked really hard uh, to think about what we had to achieve at a core level and what we could build in to make this, you know, new product that we wanted to come up with so multidimensional and so multifaceted. We're really happy with what we came up with. And that's where we've introduced what we are calling PRISM. You know, this shiny new standard in smart park technology. Um, at the highest level, I want you to think that this is a device that streamlines the guest experience and makes visits easier, more impactful, and higher value. You know, we envision guests using PRISM for the duration of their experience in your venues to get information, uh, manage their time in a totally new way. But what's most interesting to me is, is how you think of it. You know, how do you see a device like this serving you to offer a better guest experience and hopefully um, to create better revenue streams. You know, uh, we definitely achieved our goals, but the most interesting part of this is talking to you and having conversations with all of you people to know what goal you have and how this product can go into it, okay? But looking back on what we set out to achieve, we definitely did that. When it came to virtual queuing, We've built in a great communication device, um, different than some of our other devices. It really fulfills our vision of taking what we knew were great products like our QBot and changing the form factor. You know, this is on your wrist now instead of your pocket. It does so much more than that, though. You know, we've built in the NFC chip, so cashless payments are fast. They're really easy. There's no need for people to pull out their wallets, and we just know that this is going to lead to an increase in per caps and how people spend money at your site. It's too easy now for them just to tap and go. You create a great offer, you create a great product and great value, 
it's going to be simple for them to just say, yes, I want to buy that. We take away that barrier for entry for pulling out wallets and cards and thinking about it. In terms of photos, I mean, this is fantastic. It does have lots of technology, so it's really easy for you know, roving photographers to tag this band, um, store things in totally different ways like never before. You know, people aren't having to go and get a band to participate in photo services that hopefully already on them, and they can get into that very easily and very quickly. Messaging is actually something that I'm really excited about. You know, the prism can be used to broadcast messages for great offers and things like that to people that they may not have been aware of. This is a full-time communication channel that's on the wrist of your guests. You can get their attention off a promotion like never before. You know, in this example, we're showing ice cream. You know, we would use beaconing technology, and as somebody walked past the ice cream shop, they may not have been thinking about ice cream, but we can flash them a message. Hey, by the way, $2 off ice cream. Selling that person's incentive to go, you know what, I could use an ice cream. So beyond ice cream, think of the options you could use, uh, seasons passes, uh, upgrades, merchandising offers, like all these types of things you know, can be put in front of a customer in a way that you never have before. When it comes to access, we talked about that earlier. You know, this is a really easy solve for that. You know, Prism can be used to interface with several different types of access controls, like property from rooms, VIP areas, lockers, turnstile. You know, it's going to make that guest journey through venues that much easier. There's less thinking and there's just more interaction. So you can tell I get a little excited about this and, and talking about this. What really is interesting though is all of these touch points, all of these ways that people can now interact with your venue and, and it strengthen their connection with it leads to the fact that we're generating huge amounts of new data. Like we're gathering information on how people are using your facility that you never had before. And you can use this to really develop new insights about how guests are using it and to change your programs to make sure you're maximizing you know, the enjoyment that they get or the value they have out of their day. So and I really challenge you to think about what advancements you can make in, in both your marketing and operations if you can get a real view of how people are interacting on your property. I think it's pretty fantastic stuff. So if we step back and look at the features here, I'm obviously very excited about the, the opportunity there's a lot of technology packed into this little device. You know, it offers a really unique opportunity to explore multiple paths of use. You know, I think you're getting the sense that we started this journey talking about queuing and thinking about how people could make a reservation, but now we have this product that has all these fantastic features on it that you know, you'll be able to use in a lot of different ways. You know, I think the most exciting thing about it is the fact that, you know, we've got this touch screen on there. Uh, it's, it's, it's a visible aspect. Um, it's something that is like everything else in our lives. People are used to touch screens now. They're used to touching technology. There's no buttons involved in this. So this is going to really help people get at ease with how we communicate with them. And the fact that they have that information on their wrist. You know, if you look at Apple Watch or TomToms, it's increasingly how people are going. You know, and that technology is really changing how things are in the world. And, you know, we're taking advantage of it as well. Some of the other features, of course, it is a standalone device. It doesn't need to be paired with a phone. Uh, people can leave those in walkers if they want to escape their day-to-day -day reality of having to look at all that type of stuff. You know, secure contactless payments. This is a very secure chip in here, so you know we can easily you know uh, help people make these transactions and not worry about security issues. We've used a lot of really interesting power management of this device. It doesn't use a lot of energy, so it really extends the battery life. Waterproof, of course, it can be used in a lot of different environments. If you're in a dry environment, not a big deal, but anytime it might get wet or even washing hands, we know it's secure, we know it's gonna last. You know, we've talked a lot about some of the communication aspects, and I'll cover that in a little bit as well. But this, the form factor was important to us, you know, um, looking at how we can take this device and and have just one, not have multiples. So that's been really important for us to, you know, to look at sizing for kids, sizing for adults. You know, there's a lot of things that can be done with that. 
And the band two is super comfortable and brandable. So what you're seeing here is you know, a basic white one, but of course we can take this in several different ways. We can make this any color you want. So for some large venues, you know, they may want to change the colors and make it more unique. This is not this is a, this is our product as in terms of the accessible product, but you can make this your product and build it into your environment however you see fit. Oh, and bear with me here. Of course, I've touched the button and the technology is not working. There we go. Um, technical specs for those of you who are really interested in technology, you know, we sort of covered some of this. Um, when we look at the details, this device is, you know, really quite impressive. First and foremost, I think that we really need to focus on is the fact that it has three different radios in here. So there's a lot of communication options. That was really important to us. You know, we're using a long-range sub-gigahertz radio. That helps us sort of broadcast, you know, messages and events and queuing times, you know, differently than Wi-Fi. It actually extends further than a Wi-Fi signal. And it's not going to interfere with Wi-Fi networks as those become, you know, increasingly crowded. So it helps us clean up that communication, make it a bit more reliable. We also have Bluetooth low energy in here, the BLE communication. So when a person with the device comes in a range of a beacon, you know, we can signal messages or we can tell where they are. Uh, Long-term implications of that could be heat mapping. You know, you can understand how people are moving through your, your, your venue. And short range, we've got the NFC chip in there. So, you know, for cashless payments or perhaps triggering events, you know, um, using this to, in different ways where entertainment options can be can be done. So there's a lot of very interesting things with that. Um, we talked about the screen. It is uh, it's highly useful, but it's also highly, um, you know, highly durable. It's Gorilla Gas. It's high definition, easy to see in bright sunlight. You know, there's a lot of great features about this that we thought deeply about, down to the rubber O-ring. We spent a lot of time thinking about making sure this device was going to last and it was going to serve the needs of a large range of venues from ski hills to theme parks to water parks to maybe even museums. You know, it is fit with all these technical specs to be able to perform in several different environments. So we're really happy with how this has turned out, and especially with the size and weight. I should add that as well. This is really no much larger than the current wearable devices you'll find on the market, like an iWatch or a TomTom, Tom, something like that. You know, 50 grams is about where they are, and it's not much thicker, but it's got a lot packed into it. So we're quite happy with, you know, the technical specs of how this turned out and, you know, where this can go. So, you know, with that, in summary, like, I, I really challenge all of you on this call and listening to this to think about how this can be used to connect with your guests, how it can be used to, to gain more information in one consolidated way. You know, we're really interested to hear from you, uh, you know, about how you see this technology benefiting you and, and, and ways that it would really help you propel your business forward. So, you know, with that, I'd like to open the floor up to taking any questions. Um, you know, if you don't have questions now or time, feel free to contact us through our website and we can start a, a personal conversation and just understand how you think this might uh, might work for you. We'd love to explore it and, uh, and talk about, you know, all the things that we believe it will provide to you and, you know, maybe some things we haven't thought of. So thank you for your time and uh, for your patience. And with that, I'll turn it over to Katie to help me out with answering any questions. All right, thank you, Frank. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have been submitted by the group. So I will start with Great. this, which I believe you touched on previously, but um, can the band be customized? Yes, yeah. So the band, you know, as we looked at it, um, there are certain degrees of customization. So it depends what you consider, but certainly the colors um, can be customized of the band and of the face. So it can be made to match the branding of your environment. Great. Hope that answers that question. All right. Our second question is, is there a way to change the battery once its life has expired? So our first generation of product right now, you know, we were challenged to come up with a creative way to do that. Um, we are working on that right now. At present, um, 
At present, no, but I think very quickly we're developing a technique and we have our team working on that where the product could be refurbished and the battery could be replaced. So that's a bit of a fuzzy area right now. I can't say 100% yes, but that's definitely what we're working towards. It's not a rechargeable battery. It will be replaced, but as I said, we have a lot of great power saving technology and put quite a large battery in there. You know, right now we're re-estimating over 200 days of what we would consider normal use. Um, so it will last quite a while and there's a good ROI on that. But very shortly from here, I think we'll, we'll see replacing the battery and extending the life of the device quite far. Great. Um, the next question is, how much does it cost? Always a good, always a good question, right? <laughs> always, always a good question. The, the price of the unit will will depend on the volume we produce. Right now, we're targeting a, you know, a price for the unit of about $60. So it's not a, um, certainly not a disposable device. We've built this with the thinking that it's a reuse model, where people are going to a venue, you know, using it for the day, one day, two days, three days, maybe a week that they're there, returning the device, and then somebody else uses it. So there's a lot of ROI when you look at it from, from that perspective. So around $60 is, is our price point right now. Customization options, of course, would drive that up if we have to make custom uh, bands and colors. But, you know, if you want to think about it in those terms, that's a good ballpark to go with. Great. All right, our next question is, how do the cashless payments work? The device doesn't actually store any credit card information. It's really just used as an identifier. Um, so it would come down to your POS system about how to manage that. You know, with Accesso, we have our own product, Accesso Seriousware, that has stored value. And uh, really, with that, you know, it would just look at the identifier on the chip and say, okay, this is chip number so and so and so and so. I know this is related to this account and I have a stored value of this much that I'll decrement or is linked to a credit card and I will bill this credit card for this much. So um, how could you explore that further? But it, that sort of depends on your, on, your, on your payment providers as well. Great. All right, we have a couple more that have come through. So I'll start with this one. Can you make multiple you. reservations at the same time so you can organize your whole day? That's a great question. Uh, currently with our queuing platform, we tend to find that limiting people to one reservation at a time is beneficial because otherwise people start making reservations for attractions that in all honesty they may not get to. You know, people get excited. It's like a, it's like a buffet when you go, I, I know I was over to eat, you put too much on your plate. So we tend to limit it to one, but we can't, we, the functionality is built so that people can have two reservations at a time, or we create a bundle for them. So if you have multiple um, multiple events throughout the day, people could actually pre-plan their day by just really selecting one bundle. So they would, they would have a countdown timer and the ability to go to an event at, say, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So it helps spread their day out. They don't have to think about it. It is pre-planned. So yeah, in that sense, you can hold multiple reservations and we can help people sort of turn off their brains and really just enjoy the time in the venue. Okay, thanks, Frank. Um, and then it looks like our last question um, has to do with theft or loss of the device. Are, are we working on any kind of safety devices that prevent mm. loss or theft? Yeah, great question. This is not a cheap device. You don't want to work in other turnstiles. Um, you know, with somebody thinking it would be a really cool uh, memento souvenir from their day. And that's also why we built in so much communication. That Bluetooth um, radio in there, you know, we, we do have the capability to detect when people are going through turnstiles with the device and they're not supposed to be. So that really helps with that theft, uh, that theft loss and theft detection. Great. Um, thank you, Frank, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, Introducing the Shining New Standard in Smart Park Technology. Um, as Frank said, if you have any other questions or would like to learn more about our Accesso Prism, please contact us at sales at accesso.com. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar for your reference. 
On behalf of Excesso and Frank, thank you all for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone, looking forward to your questions. Take care, bye-bye.